Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio Detectives, where we bring to you tales from the greatest detective shows the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with 946 episodes broadcast on CBS Radio from 1940 to 1962, we bring to you Suspense. Now, Roma Wines present... Suspense! Tonight, my wife, Geraldine, starring Edward G. Robinson. Suspense is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live, to your happiness and entertaining guests, to your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now a glass full would be very pleasant as Roma Wines bring you... Suspense! This is the Man in Black, here for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California, to raise the curtain on another study in suspense. Tonight from Hollywood, Roma Wines bring you a star, Mr. Edward G. Robinson, in the story of an amazing hoax and a phantom love that led a man along the steep and dangerous bypaths of sanity. And so with my wife, Geraldine, and with the performance of Edward G. Robinson in the role of Geraldine's husband, we again hope to keep you in suspense. Mr. Graham. Mr. Graham. I know you're in there, Mr. Graham. You'd better open up. It's important. All right, I'll use my passkey then. Oh, why are you sitting in the dark, Mr. Graham? Go away. Leave me alone. I have something to tell you. How can you sit here in the dark alone at a time like this? Gives me the creeps. Where's that light switch? Now, isn't that better with the lights on? What do you want? Why do you keep bothering me? I told you I'm not hungry. All right. I just brought this soup along in case. Now, listen to what I have to say, Mr. Graham. Well, I can't very well help myself, can I? That detective is coming back for you. He'll be here in just a few minutes. Why are you telling me this? I don't know. It won't do you any good unless I want it to. What are you driving at? Did you kill your wife, Mr. Graham? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. And the others. Did you really kill all those women? All what women? They say you're that wife killer. The one the newspapers call the Black Widower. Well, aren't you afraid being all alone in the same room with the Black Widower? No, not exactly. Besides, they say he only kills women he's married to. <laughs> well, then I should propose to you without further delay, Miss Barton. Please, please don't joke. There's not time for it. I know a way for you to get out without being seen. There are police all around the house, but I know a I'm way... I'm not interested. I... I wasn't going to tell you anyway. Not unless I discovered it wasn't true. About your being that murderer. Well, the police say I killed Geraldine. They ought to know. They found her body, Mr. Graham. <laughs> found her? Found Geraldine? <laughs> oh, no, no, this is too good. Who identified her? You? You forget, Mr. Graham. I scarcely ever saw her close enough to identify her. Yes, but you did see her. Well, after all, a person could hardly live in the same house for close on to six months without catching a glimpse of... of Geraldine. Yes, yes, of course. Mr. Graham, you haven't much time. And what do you want, Miss Barton? A nice, juicy confession? Yes, that would be useful, wouldn't it? We'd never have to take in rumors again. You could charge admission to this house. And this is the room where the Black Widower confessed all to me. I couldn't help it, he said. It was a compulsion. I loved her, but I had to kill her. It was just like all the others. I'm sorry, Mr. Graham. I won't bother you again. If you need anything... Well, I'll go. No, uh, wait. I've hurt your feelings, haven't I? Sit down. It's 
better with you here. Really, it is. Just tell me one thing and I'll go, Mr. Graham. Did you kill her? Not the others, but her. Well, why Geraldine, especially? Because you loved her so. It was the most beautiful thing that ever happened to me. Sharing your happiness with her. The talks we used to have about her. The way you used oh, to... Oh, stop it, stop it! I'm sorry. I'll tell you. You won't believe it, but I'll tell you. Oh, please. Please do, Mr. Graham. And, uh... This may seem strange, but... I shall have to exact a solemn promise from you never to tell anyone what I'm about to reveal. I suppose it's wrong, but... Very well. You have my promise. Well, to begin with... I couldn't possibly have killed Geraldine. Then they've made a mistake. She's still alive. No, she's not alive. Oh... You knew that all along? Of course. You see, my wife, Geraldine, never even existed. Tonight for Suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you as star Mr. Edward G. Robinson, whom you have heard in the prologue to My Wife, Geraldine. A radio play by Robert Tallman from a story by Lawrence Marcus. Tonight's tale of suspense. This is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. To millions all over the world, the name Elsa Maxwell stands for gracious hospitality. Her suggestions on entertaining are eagerly sought. And here's an especially timely one. Planning a simple dinner for friends during these days of food rationing calls for imagination. Yet any hostess can compliment family and guests and make simple foods temptingly attractive. I suggest the simple and inexpensive touch that Roma lends, making party fare out of the most ordinary supper. Serve cool Roma red burgundy with the meal. If possible, too, dine by candlelight. The tart piquancy of deliciously robust Roma California Burgundy and the soft, flattering lighting heightens the pleasure of dining. Remember, though, the important thing is to serve and enjoy good Roma wine with the dinner. Dinner by candlelight with brilliant, distinctive Roma wine. Truly an appealing idea. And as Miss Maxwell suggests, delicious Roma California Burgundy is the subtle note that tones up the occasion. Roma Burgundy, like all Roma wines, is of unvarying goodness. The goodness of selected grapes, picked at their best in California's choicest vineyards, then guided to flavor fullness by the ancient winemaking skill of Roma's famed wineries. Serve Roma wine regularly. It costs only pennies a glass. Remember, more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. R-O-M-A. Roma Wines. And now it is with pleasure that we bring back to our sound stage Edward G. Robinson in My Wife Geraldine, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. I'd better go back to the beginning, uh, before Geraldine, shall we say. I was a bachelor, Miss Barton, what they call a confirmed bachelor. My mother was left a widow at the time of my life when most young men start going out with girls. She was an invalid. Well, you know how it is. It's an old story. In those days, Geraldine was only a sort of vague picture in my mind. She didn't have any name. She was only the girl that I hoped one day to marry. As the years passed by, the hope faded. But as it faded... The image of the girl became more vivid. I, uh, I always admired Geraldine Farrar, and so I named my dream girl Geraldine. I used to ride the commuting train to my job in the city, and I got to know all the regular commuters who rode in the same smoking car. They were all married men, and, uh... Good morning, Holmes. Oh. Morning, Jackson. Smith. 
Oh, uh, hello, Graham. Oh. Say, fellas, did I tell you my wife's expecting again? You don't say. Well, <laughs> congratulations, Smith, old boy. Thanks. How's about a bet? Five bucks says it's another girl. I'm betting on twins. Odds a million to one. <laughs> What's your bet, Graham? Hmm? Oh, uh, my bet? Oh, well, I, I don't have any children, you see, and well, I... What's your wife raise? Pekingese poodles? <laughs> yeah. Now that I think of it, you've never mentioned your wife in all the times we've been riding together, Graham. Well, uh, my wife, uh... Uh, I mean, uh, Geraldine, uh, well, uh, I'll, I'll show you her picture someday. She must be a raving beauty. Uh, Graham wouldn't be so quiet about it. <laughs> <laughs> I always knew Graham was nursing some secret. Now it's out. An extravagant wife. No, Geraldine is not extravagant. I don't like your tone of voice, Holmes. You're speaking of my wife. Oh, no, wait a minute. He was only kidding. I can see you haven't been married very long, Graham. <laughs> I don't believe he's married at all. Oh, you don't? Well, let me tell you something. Not all marriages are like yours. Some people stay in love. I think I may safely say that Geraldine and I will always be in love. Well, that was how it started. When I thought about it afterwards, I was astonished at my behavior. I would got as angry at the slighting remarks they had made about Geraldine as if... Geraldine had been a real person and really my wife. Well, they all wanted to believe in Geraldine. And after my mother died, she became more and more real to me and more and more necessary. Uh, come in, come in. Uh, you sent for me, Mr. Potter? Yes, yes, Graham. Have a chair. Cigar? Oh, thanks. Uh, well, the cat's out of the bag. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, You're in for a promotion in the raise and pay. Oh, uh, oh well, uh, thank you, Mr. Potter. Not at all, not at all. Glad to have another married man on our payroll. Oh. Uh, just a technicality, Graham. Yes, sir. So as to justify this raise with our main office, will you bring around your marriage license? Yes, but, uh, Mr. It's Potter, a company I... rule, Graham. Got to do it. <laughs> for all we know, you might be this black widower fella, the one that's married all those women on fake marriage licenses and then killed them for their cash and jewelry. <laughs> yes, sir. Some women will marry anybody. Even you, eh, Graham? <laughs> <laughs> well, no offense, old man. Well, I, uh, I guess I'd better be getting back to the job. Yeah, that's the spirit. Don't forget that marriage license. Uh, no, sir, I, I won't forget. Yes, sir? Are you, uh, Fred Bell? Yeah. Uh, well, look, uh, I'm in uh, sort of a spot. <laughs> you know, I've uh, just uh, changed jobs, and for the record, you understand, I have to show them my marriage license. <laughs> and by George, I've lost it, and I, I don't know what to do. Who sent you here, mister? A uh, fellow rumor my hotel, Frank McGuire. Oh. Well, you know, I'm sticking my neck way out on this. It's going to cost you dough. <laughs> Now, now it became necessary for me to change my mode of life even more. I could scarcely go on living in bachelor quarters with Geraldine. And that brought me to you, Miss Parton, remember? Yes? Um, oh, I uh, saw your advertisement in the uh, Morning Herald, a uh, uh, furnished apartment. Oh, yes. Uh, come in, won't you? Uh, thank you. You better set your bag down on the hall here. Mm, uh, no use lugging it upstairs till you've seen the place. Yes, yes, yeah. that's a good idea. It's right uh, up these stairs. Mm, thank you. Is it just you alone? Oh no, 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 no. Uh, uh, myself and wife. Oh. Well, uh, she she works late in the war plant, so uh, she gave me the rather unpleasant job of finding a place. Uh, well, this is it. Mm -hmm. Two rooms and a small kitchen. Oh. The bath's in there. Yes. Uh, yeah. Looks looks very nice. It's a good vanity table for your wife. Oh, yes, yes. I, I'm sure she'd like that especially. There's plenty of closet space for her clothes. For clothes? Well, if she's anything like most women, I'll bet that isn't all of her clothes in that one suitcase. Oh, oh, oh no, 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 of course <laughs> not. Oh, goodness, no. I, uh, well, I don't give a hang for clothes myself. Maybe that's why I'm an old maid. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. Well, uh, what, what is the rent? Ten dollars a week. That uh, We could get more, 
But since your wife Yes, is... well, yeah, all right, I'll, I'll take it. Uh, uh, here. Here's the uh, first month's rent. Well, I'd b better give you a receipt for this. Well, it's, it's not necessary, but uh, uh, my wife likes to hang on to such things for some reason. So, so you better make it out to her. Mrs. Graham, Geraldine Graham. All right, Mr. Graham. And now I uh, better go back to our old place and bring over the rest of our clothes. <laughs> What size does your wife wear, Mr. Graham? Uh, why, I, I don't know exactly. Uh, uh, what size do you wear? Uh... Well, I wear 16. She'll probably be in to have them altered anyway. Now, here's a little model that just came in. Oh, uh, no, 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 that, that won't do at all. <laughs> that, that's much too fussy for Geraldine. Well, perhaps it would help if you could describe her for me. Well, uh, she has a kind of a gentle dignity and bearing if you know what I mean. Her hair is taffy-colored with little gold lights in it. And her eyes. Her eyes are a kind of a, a luminous gray-green color. Some days they look green, and other days they, they're gray with uh, gold flecks in them. Her features are delicate, but uh, strongly molded. Sensitive, but not fragile. And her skin is fair, almost translucent with the... Uh, just a, a sprinkling of freckles when she's been out on the sun for a day. She tries to cover them up, of course, as all women do, and she's, uh, uh, well, she's not exactly... How uh, long have you been married? Uh, what? Uh, why, uh, only a short time. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not much good at describing people, especially people I know awfully well. On the contrary, you're almost too good at it. You've uh, made me feel I've met her. <laughs> You see, she was becoming more and more definite all the time. Remember how you dropped in to see me, uh, us, that day? Oh, uh, come in, Miss Barton. I thought I could help you with your unpacking. Well, uh, perhaps you could help with my wife's things. Uh, she gets home so late, I'd like to have everything arranged for her. Oh, what lovely clothes. <laughs> and that suit. Yes. Why, <laughs> just look at that suit. It's new, isn't it? Uh, well, I, I, I think it is. I'm not sure. Oh, of course it is. This is the suit I've had my eye on. I wanted it for Easter. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Why, she's just my size, too. Oh, I... Yes, yes, I, I believe she is. Well, she must be just about my coloring, too, judging from her clothes. Well, y yes, yes, there, there is something about the hair and eyes. Oh, I can't wait to see what she's like. Well, uh, don't be surprised if you don't see her for some time. She comes in quite late and leaves so early in the morning that sometimes even I wonder if she's really been home or if I just imagined it. Well, I must say, you're a gentleman to put up with it. Well, she gets a kick out of this war job. And after all, it's, it's only for the duration. You must be very much in love, Mr. Graham. Well, uh, Geraldine and I are, are an unusual couple, Miss Barton. Uh, but so far, I believe that our marriage is an unqualified success. And so the legend of Geraldine grew. The fellows at my office used to kid me about my ideal marriage. Hey, Jack, what's the matter with Graham? He hasn't phoned his wife for nearly an hour. <laughs> oh, come now. <laughs> Maybe they had a fight. Oh. Not Romeo and Geraldine Graham. How do you do it, Graham? Well, my, uh... my wife broke a plate over my head at our honeymoon breakfast, <laughs> and we've had to buy three new sets of dishes every year, ever since. <laughs> How do I do it? <clears throat> Watch this. I'll give you a lesson. I pick up the phone and dial a number at random. It was a little act I put on every day for their benefit. Unique garage, Harry speaking. Hello, darling. You still love me? Uh, hey, you got the wrong party, bud. This is the unique garage. Of course I do. Huh? Say it again, honey, just like that. Okay, you dumb. This is the unique garage. Harry speaking. Now, what do you want? Of course I don't mind you buying a new hat. Was it the crazy little one with the bird on it? The one you told me about? Listen, I got no time for gags. Are you a friend of somebody here? Well, or... uh, what do you say we go out to the show tonight and break it in, hmm? Break what in? Why, of course I'd missed you. I can't be away from you for ten seconds without feeling lost and lonely. Darling. I'm sorry, darling, but I got a heavy day tonight at the El Morocco. Goodbye, you lush. Oh, honey, you, you haven't been seeing him again. 
Yes, I know he's a friend of your sister's. Yes, I mean your sister Geraldine, but... I know Geraldine, but I don't want that man around the house. Hmm? Yes, always and always, darling. Goodbye. How clever I thought myself that day, injecting that little discordant note, just that hint of jealousy into my one-sided conversation with Geraldine. How could I have known that it would be used against me later? How could I have known that my whole new life was to fall to pieces? Because it was that afternoon that the accident happened. A piece of equipment uh, struck me in the head. When I regained consciousness, Mr. Potter was sitting beside my bed there in the company hospital. Well, where is she? Look, she's got to be notified, old fellow. Next to kin, you know. It's a law, I believe. If she isn't at home... Uh, now, please, please don't ask me any more questions. Now, now, look here, Graham. Forget that I'm your employer. Think of me as a friend. You can tell me. What is it? Has she left you? No. Well, then, where is she? Well, I, I won't say any more. I... I was going to tell you everything, but I know you wouldn't believe me. I'll just say this. There's no use... No use you're looking for her. You won't find her. You want the police mixed up in this, do you, Greg? Oh, I don't care. I'll go to prison. I'll do whatever I must, but I won't answer any more questions about Geraldine. <laughs> Well, you know the rest of the story, Miss Barton. When they released me from the hospital this morning, I knew it was only a matter of time until I'd be arrested for the murder of Geraldine. <laughs> I, I didn't know they'd find her body quite so soon. But I'm rather glad they did. Now my secret will never be known. Geraldine is as real in death as she was to me in life. Oh, Mr. Graham. Aren't you glad you told me your story? Yes. Yes, I... I knew you, you'd you understand somehow. Yes, but remember your promise. But, Mr. Graham, you can't let yourself be hanged for the murder of a woman who never existed. Now, listen to me. When that detective comes back, tell him all these no, things. No, I will not, Miss Barton. Let them think I'm the black widow. Oh, but... Uh... I even forged the marriage license. Oh, Mr. Graham, and if only I'd known you The police you then. description. No, it's all too perfect. Apparently, this black widower and I look startlingly alike. So you see, it's quite hopeless. Mr. Graham, that's the detective now. What are you going to do? Nothing. I'm tired. I'll be glad to get it over. I couldn't bear to tell them about Geraldine. I couldn't stand for people to read about her and me in the papers and go about making cruel jokes over us. I don't care about saving my own life at that cost. Oh, please. That's why I made you give me your solemn promise to keep our secret, Miss Barton. But before they come in, I'd, uh... I'd, I'd just like to say... You've been wonderful. You, uh... <laughs> you know, you're, 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 you're rather like Geraldine. <laughs> Mr. Graham, I... Oh, George. My poor, poor dog. All right, put the bracelets on him, Riley. Bring the woman along for questioning. Yeah, right. Just a moment, officer. You're making a terrible mistake. Listen to me. He is not the Black Widower. We know that, lady. They picked that one up in Albany a couple of hours ago. You found the Black Widower? Oh, George. What's that? My goodness. But your friend Mr. Graham here has still got some explaining to do. Such as? Such as what happened to his wife. We've got a corpus delicti and everything, you know. Well, very well, officer. I guess oh, I'm... Will you be quiet, George? Officer, can I believe the evidence of my own ears? Do you say there is some question regarding Mr. Graham's wife? That's right. His wife. Well, it seems to me that a lot of trouble could have been spared if you had asked me about it. What? What do you mean? Now, please, please, my dear. You promised please, you... Uh, you see, I... I am Geraldine Graham. Well, I don't want... Hey, listen, what's this? You're his wife. He has no other. Now, please, please, it's very kind of you, but it's no use. Uh, you see, officer, you, you won't believe me, but... Geraldine never Officer, existed. Officer, my husband has had a very serious accident. He isn't quite right in the head yet, and you are not helping matters. Oh, Riley, get that phone, will you? Sure. Now then, let's get this straight once and for all. Riley speaking. What? Yeah? Hold everything. Huh? Hey, it's headquarters on the phone. They've identified that woman's corpus delecti. Her name is Oymansud Bovac. She fell off a tugboat. <laughs> 
Well, why didn't they say so in the first place? Well, folks, <laughs> it looks like we had a little misunderstanding all around. You know how it is. Well, take care of yourself, Mr. Graham. Goodbye, Mrs. G. I'm pleased to have made your acquaintance. Come on, Ryan. Come on. Let's get out of here. Hey, Miss, uh, Miss Barton, uh, uh, Agnes, I, I don't really know... George. Yes? What was Geraldine like? I mean, what did she look like? Well, uh, really, my dear, I... Well, uh, Geraldine, well, she has a kind of a gentle dignity and a grace of bearing. Her hair is taffy-colored with little gold lights in it. And her eyes, well, her eyes are a kind of luminous gray-green color. Her skin is fair, almost translucent, with just a sprinkling of freckles when she's been out in the sun for a day. She tries to cover them up, of course, as all women do, and... I always do. You know, George, I was just looking in the mirror here while you were... You know, my hair is taffy-colored, and the little gold lights in it. That was very observant of you, George. And my eyes... Would you really say gray-green? My goodness. My goodness, I do believe. Miss Barton, uh, Agnes, do you suppose... That we could be married immediately? I rather think that can be arranged. And thank you for your nice proposal. My dear. Darling. Oh. George. What is Geraldine going to think of all this? She'll be furious. And so closes My Wife Geraldine, starring Edward G. Robinson. Jeanette Nolan appeared as Agnes opposite Mr. Robinson in tonight's study in... Suspense. Suspense is produced, edited, and directed by William Spear. Before Mr. Robinson returns to our microphone, this is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. One woman recognized as knowing all the niceties of entertaining is the world-famous hostess, Miss Elsa Maxwell. She has this to say about simple wartime entertaining. Good friends and good Roma sherry. These are the makings of a pleasant evening. Roma California sherry is ideal for any occasion before dinner with appetizers or during friendly afternoon or evening visits. You and your guests will enjoy the light, nut-like flavor of glorious amber-colored Roma Sherry. And for fullest enjoyment, serve cool. Delicious and distinguished as they are, Roma wines cost only pennies a glass. Serve and enjoy them often. Remember, more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. And next time you use vermouth, sweet or dry, choose Roma vermouth. Zestful, full-flavored Roma vermouth is blended, mellowed, and developed with all the traditional winemaking skill of Roma wineries, yet surprisingly low-priced. Try Roma vermouth soon, won't you? This is Edward G. Robinson. I have certainly enjoyed appearing here this evening on Suspense, and I want to tell you how much I'm looking forward to hearing next week's broadcast in this series... My friend James M. Kane, who wrote Double Indemnity in the fun version of which I had the honor of appearing this year, is the author of another wonderful suspense story called Love's Lovely Counterfeit. You will hear it next Thursday, and your star will be Mr. Humphrey Bogart. Remember him? I used to knock him off every morning before breakfast. <laughs> well, that sounds like quite a show, and I know you won't want to miss it. Edward G. Robinson is currently starring in the international production The Woman in the Window. Next Thursday, same time, Mr. Humphrey Bogart will be your star of Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.
That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.